Hello guys, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you've all noticed my very significant aesthetic and stylish goatee, which I've begun rocking. Uh, coincidentally, I tried entering a playground the other day and a cop wouldn't let me in for some reason. I don't really get that. But anyways, let's get into the subject matter for today, which is going to be cash eviction policies. So similar to your evil ex-girlfriend, sometimes when you've got too much of something that you don't want around, you're gonna have to get rid of it. The same is true for cash data. So let's talk about how we can do so in today's episode. All right, I got this long white fella out right here, and I may or may not be talking about the Apple Pencil. So today, like I mentioned, we'll be talking about cash eviction policies. So the same applies for caching on a single desktop computer as well, or just a normal CPU. But basically, whenever we're talking about caching, we want to avoid cache misses. Generally speaking, in order to ensure that we're using faster storage, we're probably using more expensive storage for our caches, and as a result, we're gonna have less of it. What that means is that when we run out of data in our cache and we wanna put some new data in there, we're probably going to have to evict some old data. And so again, this is going to allow us to avoid misses, assuming that we do it in a smart way. So what would be one example of that? Well, for example, let's say I am over here and I'm trying to figure out how many views I have. And then we've got Gaurav Sen, a former collaborator of mine, asking how many views he has. And we're both hitting this cache. I might hit it first, thus the reason I have an entry in the cache. But then if Gaurav goes and asks for his data, he might actually clobber my entry because perhaps we only have three entries in the cache. And then we would have, you know, Gaurav with, you know, 100K views. And then now I go and ask again, and now my data is gone. And Joe Rogan and PewDiePie never even asked how many views they had, so who needed their data in the cache? So again, we wanna be smart about when and why we get rid of our data. So let's talk about some eviction policies that we can use to determine you know, what we actually get rid of in a cache when we run out of space and how we might actually go ahead and implement it. The first one is first in, first out, or FIFO. So FIFO, as the name implies, is implemented using a queue. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and add a piece of data to the cache that I'm going to use in the future, I would go and add it to the head of the list right here. And then let's say, you know, Gorov comes along and he wants to add his own piece of data. So Gorov for 100K. So he has 100K views in his video. He would add it at the end of the linked list. And then as a result, we would find the current head over here. So it's this guy here, head. And then we would just go and X that out and say, now the head is here. And so that's pretty easy to implement, right? We all know how to use queues, assuming we've done a little bit of data structures and algorithms prep. However, there's a big issue with that, which is that when I am over here, rather, and I eventually get my data expired, if I want to keep accessing it, and I've been accessing it that entire time, we don't actually account for the fact that I'm still interested in my data. If I've accessed this thing 100 different times, and eventually I get expired as more pieces of data get added to the cache, well, guess what? I'm screwed out of luck, regardless of how often I'm using the cache. So, what would be a more intelligent method? Well, one of them might be LRU or least recently used, which actually goes ahead and takes into account when the last time I accessed a piece of data in the cache was, and as a result, if I accessed it very recently, then we don't wanna remove that, but rather we have a preference for removing pieces of data that have not been accessed in a long time. So let's go ahead and say something like this, where this is like oldest, and this is newest. And so again, Gorov is going to come in and add a new piece of data. Gorov, and so now we can add it into our doubly linked list. I'll explain why we do that in a second. And then we would get rid of PewDiePie because that is at the oldest end of things. So that's how we would do um, a new entry in the LRU cache. But the again, the unique thing about LRU is that entries that already exist have to be moved around. So for example, let's say I read my entry and now I wanna move that to the beginning of the list. Basically, I'd have to flip spots with Gorov to be putting it in the newest section over here. And that right there is the reason why we implement it this way, which is a hash map plus a doubly linked list. So you can see that the access pattern would be, okay, I want to move where Jordan is in the doubly linked list. First, I go to the map. It tells me here's the node for Jordan over here. 
And then now because it's a doubly linked list, I can do the actual shifting around of the nodes in O of one time, because whatever node it is that I'm taking, I'm literally just putting it at the head over here. Hopefully that makes sense. Sorry if it was a little bit poorly drawn out, but the point is you go to the hash map, you find your node, you move it to the head of the linked list, that's O of one, makes life super easy. That's why we're using a doubly linked list right here to keep time complexity nice and low. And so LRU is relatively easy to implement, which is why it's commonly used in practice. It also just makes a lot of sense. If I you know, accessed a value in the cache a minute ago, it doesn't matter if it's been in there for a week. I still want it because I'm still accessing it, so I shouldn't get rid of it. Another possible alternative is LFU, or least frequently used. So I'm not gonna go too deeply into the implementation of something like this because in and of itself, it is a lead code hard problem. But the general gist is you would actually want basically like two sets of doubly linked lists also with hash maps. And each of those doubly linked lists would have a frequency. So the frequency is going to represent how many times that cache entry has been accessed before. So you can see, uh, for the example of Jordan and how many views he has on YouTube, he has 10 views and that cache entry has been accessed eight times. The Joe Rogan entry has been accessed four times and the PewDiePie entry has been accessed six times. So if we had to evict one of these entries, which one would it be? It would be the Joe Rogan entry because it was least frequently used. It's only been used four times as opposed to the other two more popular entries. So again, doubly linked list of frequencies where it would be like, um, you know, Da, 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 da. Here are all the nodes that have been accessed four times. Here are all the nodes that have been accessed three times. Blah, 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 blah. And then these in and of themselves are linked up. And then, you know, you might have one linked to six. Again, look up the implementation yourself. I don't really want to make this video 20 minutes long. I think it would defeat the purpose. I don't think anyone's going to ask you how to implement this in a systems design interview. But if you are preparing for DSNA, maybe it could come up. So you never know. So what is the conclusion to this relatively short video? Well, basically the answer is, as per usual, there is no right answer for choosing a cash eviction policy. However, there are definitely wrong answers. FIFO, probably not as good as LRU. LIFO, which you would implement with a stack, I really can't think of a good reason to use. Random eviction policies, probably also pretty bad, though they do come with the advantage that you don't actually have to have any extra metadata about your cache data. So maybe if you're really cramped for space, doing things randomly could potentially be useful. But just generally speaking, you should know the trade-offs of these approaches, a general idea of how to implement them, because at least for LRU, it could definitely come up in an interview. And of course, when you ultimately want to be using them, which is going to depend on your use case. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's keep those views up so I don't have to sell foot pics, and I will see you in the next episode.